السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا رسول الله All praises are due to Allah, the creator, the cherisher and the sustainer of this universe and may his peace and blessings be upon his noble prophet Muhammad and his companions and descendants and followers Dear respected brothers and sisters Jazakumullah khairan for coming and for joining our workshop This is uh, Session number four, right? Okay. Uh, let's first check the homework. What was the homework last time? To fast one day, one extra day, secretly, right? Okay. I want to know who did that. Show me your hand. There's no rear in this. One, two, okay. three, huh? four, five. Okay, good. Really secretly, someone knew or you were able to really keep it a secret. Yeah, okay, your wife sometimes can, yeah, okay. Uh, for, uh, when, when did she discover? Five o'clock, uh, uh, okay. And you? So you did it twice. Ah, so. But second time you were able to keep it secret? You were able. Everybody, yeah, didn't know you were able to cheat everybody. <laughs> your wife is not here, alhamdulillah. You're lucky that your wife is not with you. Who else? Huh? He wasn't able. To keep it secret or to fast? To keep it secret, okay. Until how long? Someone asks you if you're fasting? No, 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 but by the way, you can, you can, you can do something called a ta'rid, which is, you, you answer another answer that is not direct to the question by saying, well, you know what, brothers, uh, brother, uh, when it's about extra good deeds, usually, if people do it, they should do it secretly. So, if I am fasting, you shouldn't ask me. This is, if I am fasting, so when you do so, you will have the, 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 uh, the uh, the uh, the feeling that you're not okay so but anyway how did you find it did you find it difficult to keep it secret difficult huh. you found it difficult you really yeah felt like you want to tell people it's yani, right did you find it difficult to keep it secret not that much good huh. okay Let's start. Actually, today's session is a very special one. And it was actually very hard for me to prepare it. Uh, a very difficult one. It's about Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and how Allah made him or how Allah purified his spirit. How Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was spiritually purified and I really I, I, I was nearly unable to complete it today in the morning to come to finish it because it's so hard I really felt that he's so dear to my heart with all what he got of this disciplining of this uh, terbiyah uh, but the issue is does Prophet Muhammad or did Prophet Muhammad need spiritual purification? Well, let's see. Some of you would say, of course not. He doesn't need. He is, he is the Prophet. He is the best human being. But actually, the Quran says, We asked about you last time. So the question is, does or did Prophet Muhammad need spiritual purification? The Quran says in Surah Al-Kahf. Yes. Someone wants to take Shahada now? No, it's not, this is not the topic now. I'm not going to talk about Christianity now. I cannot. After we finish, during the questions and answers, I can do that, inshallah. Okay. Again, the question is, 
Did Prophet Muhammad need spiritual purification? The answer is yes, definitely. No one is exempt from tarbiyah. No one is exempt. And when it was about tarbiyah, imaniyah, did he need uh, to increase his iman? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you're done, when you're done from da'wah, when you're done from teaching, when you're done from jihad, don't go and sleep. Stand up and pray at night. So he needed tarbiyah ibaniyah to be Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And again, spiritually, yes. The last verse in Surah Al-Kahf, it says, قُلْ إِنَّمَا أَنَا بَشَرٌ مِثْلُكُمْ Say, I am just a man like you. I am just a human being like you. So he's a human being like us. What is the difference? What is the difference between us and him? The verse continues. Yuha ilayya. But I receive revelation. We don't receive revelation. So he is, according to the Quran, a human being like us. But he receives revelation. We don't receive revelation. What mainly did he receive? أَنَّمَا إِلَاهُكُمْ إِلَاهُ وَاحِدٌ فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحْدٍ Mainly he received tawheed. That your Lord is one and that the one who wants salvation, who seeks salvation, let him do good work and not uh, associate anyone with Allah. Actually here, this is the difference between Islam and Christianity. Because in Christianity, people can seek salvation through Iman only. Just believe you are done. You can go to paradise. In Islam, you can say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and still go to hellfire. Why? Because you have to do good work. Salvation in Islam is a bird that flies with two wings. One wing, it will fall down. One wing is Iman, faith, and the second wing is good work. Iman alone is not sufficient. Good work alone is not sufficient. But the issue here, again, the beginning of the verse says, Say, I am a human being like you. So he's a human being like us. Which means that he needs what we need too. And he can become ill. And he, can, he is subjected to disease. He is subjected to disease physically and spiritually. Who is Prophet Muhammad Sassim? He is someone that Allah chose to be among the prophets. The prophets. So he is one of the elite. And then, more special, Allah chose him to be among the messengers. Because not every prophet is a messenger. All messengers are prophets, but not every prophet is a messenger. This is a aqidah issue that we need to talk about it later. But he was chosen to be among the elite of the elite. And then, more special, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him to be among the five mightiest messengers. Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, son of Mary, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. So he is the elite of the elite of the elite. And then, more special, Allah chose him to be the seal of the prophets. Huh? Okay. Be the seal of the prophets. And you always keep the best to the end. It's so special. But because of all that, <laughs> and he's a human being, he is subjected to be spiritually weak. Because of all that. Ego. He's, he's a human being. So Allah purified his spirit. Unless he gets very special spiritual purification, he can be he is subjected to spiritual weaknesses. Let alone that he is the most beloved to his companions. So he has a lot of companions who love him so much, ready to sacrifice themselves and their children for him. This can also affect him negatively, by the way, affect his spirit negatively. We spoke about that before. When you are always looked at highly and stuff like that, 
most respected. Add to this, being the most beautiful example. Can you imagine this? Allah tells the whole world in the Quran that he is the most beautiful example for all people. How dangerous this can be for him, by the way. Spiritually. For the ego. So can you imagine this? Allah, you know what? When I tell people that uh, this brother is the most beautiful example for you. I'm telling 100 people in the mosque. This can make him go crazy actually. Wow, people will look at him highly. So what about Allah telling the whole world in verses that will be recited till the end of time that the Prophet وسلم, is the most beautiful example for all people. Still, this is this all of this makes him subjected to spiritual weakness. So he needed to get very special terbiya. And the terbiya of the Prophet. Tell me, who did terbiya to the Prophet? Who disciplined the Prophet? His mother? His father? His grandfather? All of them died when he was uh, so young. So actually, who disciplined him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was disciplined by Allah. Allah disciplined him vertically and horizontally. Horizontally, in all four types of terbiyah. All four types of terbiyah. Terbiyah imaniya, faith. Terbiyah ruhiya, spiritual. Terbiyah aqliya, or terbiyah uh, 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 ma'rifiya. And physical terbiyah. So Allah, we said, we have four things. That needs to be the mind, the heart, the spirit, and the body. Allah actually purified all of that and did terbiah to all of this. Vertically, because every one of these things was purified by Allah to the end, was perfected. Perf perfectly, Allah disciplined them. And he, by the way, Prophet Muhammad, he has a hadith which is a hadith da'if. This hadith is weak, weak narration. It says, Rabbi ta'dibi. My Lord disciplined me and he disciplined me well. You go to the books of hadith. All of them, they tell you, this is a weak narration, but the meaning is right. All the scholars say, even though it's a weak hadith, but it means right. The right it, it really means, it, it, the meaning is true. The meaning is true. It's Allah who disciplined Prophet Muhammad. But the issue is, the way Allah disciplined him, we cannot bear one over 1,000 of it. And you will see this today. It's a very difficult lesson. Believe me, I'm trying to يعني, يعني, uh, make the introduction as lengthy as possible because I feel like I don't want to enter into the lesson itself. The body of the lesson is too hard. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him, Inna sanulqi alayka qawlan thaqila. I am going to descend on you a heavy word. It was heavy on the Prophet sallallahu The first way that Allah disciplined Prophet Muhammad with was positive support through expressing love. Allah expressed his love to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu This is very positive, positive support. The only human being in the world whom Allah swore by his life is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says in Surah Al-Hijr, لَعَمْرُكَ إِنَّهُمْ لَفِي سَكْرَتِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ By your life, Prophet, they wander in distraction in their wild intoxication. So Allah is swearing by his life. The only person. He also told him in Surah At-Tur, وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ Wait patiently, Prophet, for your Lord's judgment. You are under our watchful eye. So Allah is saying, I am keeping an eye on you. I'm protecting you. 
This is very positive, mashallah. So, so he is in a very high position because Allah, because of Allah. But without Allah, he has neither power nor authority. And the rest of the lesson today, you will see this. Allah is always giving him this feeling that without me, you are nobody. In order that his ego doesn't take him too far. Allah, for example, told him in Surah Al-A'raf, today's lesson, all of it is Quran. How Allah talks to the Prophet ﷺ. Making him feel that he has no authority nor power without Allah. Qul, say. Every qul in the Quran means say, O Muhammad. Muhammad, tell them. Every qul, every say. قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي ضَرَّ نَفْعًا وَلَا ضَرَّ إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ وَلَوْ كُنْتُ أَعْلَمُ الْغَيْبَ لَاسْتَكْثَرْتُ مِنَ الْخَيْرِ وَمَا مَسَّنِيَ السُّوءُ إِنْ أَنَا إِلَّا نَذِيرٌ وَبَشِيرٌ لِقَوْمٍ يُؤْمِنُونَ It says, say, I have no control over benefit or harm, even to myself, except as God may please. So Allah is telling him to tell people that he himself has no control over benefit or harm even to himself. Which means I am helpless. If I had knowledge of what is hidden, I would have abundant good things and no harm could touch me. Which means I know nothing about Al-Ghayb, the unseen, the, un the hidden. I don't know it. Same verse came in Surah Yunus. قُلْ لَا أَمْلِكُ لِنَفْسِي ضَرَّ وَلَا نَفْعَى إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ which means, say, I have no control over benefit or harm even to myself. You know what? Uh, you know, Christians, subhanAllah, today I, I'm referring to Christians just by coincidence. Yeah. Christians believe that Jesus is God and Son of God and stuff like that. While actually the Bible, which exists in their hands today, doesn't say that. And actually, in John 5.30, Jesus says, Out of my own self, I can do nothing. Which means, I'm a servant. A servant of Allah. I can't do anything without the help of Allah. Same thing. In the Quran, Allah tells the Prophet Sallallahu After the battle of Uhud, the Prophet Sallallahu made dua against the enemy, against the unbelievers who killed 70 of his companions and mutilated the body of his uncle. So he made dua against them, like Prophet Nuh. Prophet Nuh made dua also against the enemy. And he said, رَبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَارًا Lord, leave not of the unbelievers a single person on earth. That's what Noah said. So the Prophet made dua against the unbelievers. So what did, what did Allah tell him? لَيْسَ لَكَ مِنَ الْأَمْرِ شَيْءٌ أَوْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَوْ يُعَذِّبَهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ ظَالِمُونَ Whether God relents towards them, which means turns to them with mercy, or punishes them, this is not for you to decide. These are verses from the Quran that we were reading and we never understood. Allah is telling him, whether I treat them with mercy or I punish them, it's not up to you. It's not you who decides. Someone came and asking him about when is the Hereafter, when is the last day? So Allah told him, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا فِيمَا أَنْتَ مِنْ ذِكْرَاهَا إِلَى رَبِّكَ مُنْتَهَاهَا إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُنْذِرُ مَنْ يَخْشَهَا They ask you, Prophet, about the hour, saying, when will it arrive? But how can you tell them that? Its time is known only to your Lord. You are only sent to warn those who fear it. It's like, you will not know, and you, you don't know, and you will not know. This is something up to your Lord.
They ask you, when is it? When will it arrive? It's, this is not your job. Admonishing. There was a lot of admonishing, actually. Of course, the famous example is Abasa wa Tawalla. You know what happened? If you know what happened, you don't feel that the Prophet did anything wrong. He was in a very important meeting with the heads of Quraysh, trying to convince them with Islam. Had he convinced them with Islam, there could have been no Badr or Uhud or Ahzab or anyone dying or any battles or anything. So it's an extremely important meeting. And then a companion, a blind companion came. He heard the voice of the Prophet. So he didn't know that the Prophet وسلم, is in an important meeting. So he said, give me advice, O Muhammad. And then the Prophet saw him coming. The Prophet felt like, it's not time now for this. So the Prophet frowned. He didn't feel good. And he turned his face from him and he kept talking to the uh, heads of Quraysh, the unbelievers, and the companion understood that the Prophet is busy now and he left. left. That's it. The, the, the companion did not, and the Prophet did not hurt the feeling of the companion because the companion is blind. The companion did not learn that the Prophet frowned and turned his face except from the Quran. The Quran told us what happened. Had not the Quran tell us, no one could have known that the Prophet frowned and turned his face. But the Quran came telling everybody to the end of time what the Prophet did. He frowned and turned away when the blind man came to him. How do you know? He might have grown in spiritually or taken note of something useful from you. For the self-satisfied one, you go out of your way. Which means you give attention to those who are idolaters. Though you are not to be blamed for his lack of spiritual growth, but from the one who has come to you full of eagerness and awe, oh, you allow yourself to be distracted. No, indeed, this is a reminder. Kalla, innaha tadkira. The Prophet Allah tells him, this is a reminder. Never again. <laughs> Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Ya ayyuhan nabiyu lima tuharrimu ma ahalla allahu lak. Tabitaghi mardata azwajik. Wallahu ghafuru rahim. Prophet, why do you prohibit what God has made lawful to you in your desire to please your wives? The Prophet, one of his wives, made something dessert that he likes. The other wives, you know, wives, co-wives. So they spoke to each other that every every time he comes near any one of us, you, we should tell him that, oh, you, your mouth stinks. Don't eat this again. So he said, okay, I'm not going to eat it again. And this, of course, will make the other wife upset because he likes it and she makes this food for him. So he said, okay, I'm not going to eat it again. Allah tells him, you are prohibiting something that Allah made it lawful for you to please your wives. The hypocrites. They did not go out in the battle of Tabuk. And they came to the Prophet giving excuses, false excuses. And the Prophet ﷺ gives them permission not to go out to the battle. Allah tells him, God forgive you, Prophet. Why did you give them permission to stay at home before it had come it, it had become clear to you which of them spoke the truth and which were liars. God forgive you. God, God is telling him, may God forgive you. Why did you do so? I want you to realize the strict tone in this verse. The Prophet ﷺ was making dua that Allah forgives some of the hypocrites who died. Allah is making dua for them. That Allah treats them with mercy. The Prophet is making dua. Praying for them. Allah tells him, استغفر لهم أو لا تستغفر لهم إن تستغفر لهم سبعين مرة فلا يغفر الله له. ذلك بأنهم كفروا بالله ورسوله والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين. 
It makes no difference. Allah is telling the Prophet in the Quran. It makes no difference, Prophet, whether you ask forgiveness for them or not. God will not forgive them even if you ask forgiveness for them 70 times. See how strict Allah was with the Prophet disciplining him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told him the same in another surah. سواء عليهم استغفرت لهم أم لم تستغفر لهم لا يغفر الله لهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين. It makes no different prophet whether you ask forgiveness for them or not. God will not forgive them. God does not guide those who rebel against Him. This is in another surah. There was also some threatening tone. ولو تقول علينا بعض الأقاويل لأخذنا منه باليمين ثم لقطعنا منه الوتين. If the Prophet had attributed some fabrication to us, we would certainly have seized his right hand and cut off his life artery. Which means he cannot dare to fabricate any Quran or say anything that I did not say or else I would cut his artery. Subhanallah. Very strict. Of course, the Prophet would never do that. Okay, uh, that's what I say. Half. Okay. 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 That verse was from Surah Al Haqqa, 44 to 47. Listen to this. The night of Isra and Mi'raj, which was a week ago, people were celebrating Al Isra and Mi'raj. The, uh, the, the uh, night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem and then the ascendance to heavens. What happened to the Prophet at that night? He's a, so, he's a very special man. Allah took him in a night journey from Mecca to Jerusalem. In the company of Jibril, Archangel Gabriel. On a special ride, Al-Buraq. And Allah gathered for him all the prophets to lead them in salah. And he was the imam of all the prophets, including Abraham, including Noah, the fathers of the prophets. He was their leader in salah. And then ascended to heavens. And then Gabriel told him, you proceed because after this point I cannot proceed. I'm not allowed. Don't you think this is dangerous for him? As a human spirit? The ego. Listen what happened coming back from Isra and Mi'raj. Surah Al-Isra descended. You have to see how Allah talked to him in Surah Al-Isra. Coming back with all these honors. Allah tells him, وَلَئِنْ شِئْنَا لَنَذْهَبَنَّ بِالَّذِي أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ ثم لا تجد لك به علينا وكيلا إلا رحمة من ربك إن فضله كان عليك كبيرا If we pleased, we could take away what we have revealed to you. Then you would find no one to plead for you against us if it were not for your Lord's mercy. His favor to you has been truly great. Which means I, could, I can take the Quran from you and leave you like that and no one can help you. In Surah Al-Isra, of course, that was uh, Surah Al-Isra 76 to 87. Surah Al-Isra, verse number 22, is telling him what? لا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتقعد مذموما مخذولا Set up no other God beside God or you will end up disgraced and forsaken. Of course, the Prophet Sallallahu will never take an idol beside God. But... As a human being, the ego is an idol. Many of us have big egos and the egos are growing and they become the idol that we worship. Many of us worship themselves, worship the I. I did, I became, I'm the best, I'm the richest, I'm the most beautiful, I'm the most powerful, I am, I am, I am. And some people may say, but maybe this verse was not to the Prophet ﷺ. Listen to verse number 39. It's telling him, ذلك مما أوحى إليك ربك من الحكمة 
ولا تجعل مع الله إلها آخر فتلقى في جهنم ملوما مدحورا It's very clear that Allah is talking to him because he says this is some of the wisdom your Lord has revealed to you Do not set up another God beside God or you will be thrown into hell blamed and rejected Of course all these teachings are for us too So Allah and the Quran the Quran actually or Allah is disciplining us through the Prophet He took all of this for us Allah tells him وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ وَلَتَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ بَلِ اللَّهَ فَاعْبُدْ وَكُمْ مِنَ الشَّاكِرِينَ It has already been revealed to you, Prophet, and to those before you, like Jesus and Moses and Abraham and Noah. And if you ascribe any partner to God, all your work will come to nothing. You will be one of the losers. No. Worship God alone and be one of those who are grateful to him. Among the ways also, Allah disciplined Prophet Muhammad is by reducing the weight of his mission. Like telling him, well, your mission is important, of course, but not too much. Subhanallah. You're not the first one. You're not like that. See this. Allah tells him, "In anta illa nadir, you are just a warner. Inna arsalna ka bil haqi bashira wa nadiran, wa in min ummatin illa khala fiha nadir. We have sent you with the truth as a bearer of good news and warning, and every community has been sent a warner. So you're not as if Allah is telling him, you're not unique. We, I have sent prophets like you." I have sent others like you. So it's like disciplining. Surah Az-Zumar. Of course, this was Surah Fatir 23-24. Surah Az-Zumar, it says, Inna anzalna alayka al-kitab lil-nasi bil-haqqi faman ihtada fali-nafsihi wa man dalla fa innama yadillu alayha wa ma anta alayhim biwakil. Here Allah is limiting his power and limiting his authority by telling him, we have sent the scripture down to you, Prophet, with the truth of for people, whoever f- follows the guidance does so for his own benefit. Whoever strays away from it does so at his own peril. And you are not in charge of them. Which means this is all your authority and all your power just to propagate the message clearly. And then, you don't have any other, you're not in charge. Limiting his power and limiting his authority. And of course, there are verses like that, a lot of verses like that. A lot, I'm not quoting them all. لست عليهم بمسيطر You don't, you're not in charge of them. وما على الرسول إلا البلاغ المبين The only responsibility of the messenger is to propagate the message clearly. This is the only responsibility. You cannot force anyone. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ اللَّهُ حَفِيظٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمَا أَنْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ بِوَكِيلٌ Surah Shura number 6. It says, As for those who take protectors other than Allah, God is watching them. You are not responsible for them. I gave you a message, go and say it. That's why Jesus in the Bible, by the way, or in the Gospel, not in the Bible, he is speaking about Prophet Muhammad in a very, very famous verse. Saying, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. And he will not say except what he hears. And he will give glory to me. When he, the spirit of truth, one of the names of the Prophet was As-Sadiq Al-Ameen, the spirit of truth. The truthful. When he comes, and this goes against the Christian uh, explanation of the verse, when they say, hey, come on, Jesus is speaking about the Holy Spirit. No. 
Jesus is saying, when he, the spirit of truth, comes. So he's speaking about something that will come in the future. The Holy Spirit existed at the time of Jesus. So here Jesus is speaking about someone who will come in the future. He will guide you into all the truth. The verse of the Quran says, today I perfected for you the religion. All the truth. The religion was perfected. Okay? And he will not say except what he hears. Which means he will not speak out of his own self. That's exactly what the Quran says. You cannot speak. You, you, you only deliver the message. Don't do anything more than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him in Surah Qaf, verse number 45. نحن أعلم بما يقولون وما أنت عليهم بجبار فذكر بالقرآن من يخاف وعيد We know best what the disbelievers say You Prophet are not there to force them So remind with this Quran those who fear my warning سورة الغاشية 21-22 فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر which means so warn them, you all, your only task is to give warning. Limiting the task, limiting the authority, limiting the power. Your only task is to give warning. You are not there to control them. Allah tells him in Surah Maryam 97, we have simplified it, the Quran. We have simplified it and made it easy in your own language. So Allah is telling, يعني Allah doesn't tell him, you are very eloquent and you explain it well. No, Allah says, I am the one who simplified it on your tongue. Every, all the success comes from Allah. Nothing comes from you, even you, Prophet Muhammad. All the success comes from Allah. فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ I have simplified it and made it easy in your language. وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad is only a messenger before whom many messengers have been and gone. Surah Ali Imran 144. And the verse says, If he died or was killed, would you revert to your old ways? If anyone did so, he would not harm God in the least. Which means, he came as a prophet and he died. Are you going to leave Islam? Were you worshipping him or me? So Allah is saying, Were you worshipping him or Allah? So here Allah is, of course the prophet is saying so about himself. He is told to go and say so about himself to people, to his companions. Do you think this is easy spiritually? He needs to be disciplined spiritually. To go and say so. Muhammad is only a messenger who came and like other messengers who came before him and died. SubhanAllah. I, that was the hardest. The next one. Referring him to those who are less in knowledge than him and less in iman even, less in faith. Telling him, go ask them. Let them tell you. The verse in Surah Yunus, number 94, I find it the hardest. فَإِن كُنْتَ فِي شَكٍ مِمَّا نَزْأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ فَاسْأَلِ الَّذِينَ يَقْرَؤُونَ الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَقَدْ جَاءَكَ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّكَ فَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْمُمْتَرِينَ So if you Prophet are in doubt about what we have revealed to you, ask those who have been reading the scriptures before you. If you are in doubt of the Qur'an, of what I am telling you in the Qur'an, go ask the Jews. Let them tell you. The Prophet, when he received this verse, he said, I never doubted and I'm not going to ask them. I never doubted. But discipline, discipline. If you are in doubt of about what I have revealed to you, ask those who have been reading the scriptures before you. The truth has come to you from your Lord, so be not in doubt and do not deny God's signs. There was also some motivation 
by mentioning to him how good were the messengers before him. They are his equals. He's a messenger, they are messengers. He's a prophet, they are prophets. In Surah An-Nahl, verse number 120, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Abraham was truly an example. An ummah also can mean also a whole nation. Ibrahim was equal to a whole nation. Which is motivating him to, which means, do good. Be like Ibrahim. Don't be less than him. Motivation also. وَاتَّخَذَ اللَّهُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ خَلِيلًا God took Abraham as a friend. ذُرِّيَّةَ مَنْ حَمَلْنَا مَعَ نُوحٍ إِنَّهُ كَانَ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا you, uh, Allah is talking to people saying you are descendants of those who were carried with Noah. He was truly a thankful servant. So when the Prophet ﷺ hears Allah praising those prophets who came before him, he gets motivated to be at least not less than them. وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ الَّذِي وَثَّى Surah Al-Najm 37 And Abraham who fulfilled his duty. For us these verses are normal because well those are the prophets. But for him it wasn't and he doesn't take it like we take it. For him they are his equals. So he gets motivated. There is also indoctrination. at talqeen Allah indoctrinated him. In every situation, Allah tells him what to do. Doesn't give him the autonomy <laughs> to go and no. Indoctrinated. If they do not believe you, Prophet say, I act for myself and you for yourselves. You are not responsible for my actions, nor am I responsible for yours. Indoctrination. The Quran is full of say, 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 say. Not giving him the chance to innovate. You just do what you're told. You just say what you're told. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْجِبَالِ فَقُلْ يَنْسِفُهَا رَبِّي نَسْفَا Surah Taha 105. They ask you, Prophet, about the mountains. Say, on that day, my Lord will blast them into dust. وَإِنْ جَادَلُوكَ فَقُلِ اللَّهُ أَعْلَمُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Al-Hajj 68 And if they argue with you, say, God is well aware of what you are doing. So there is no flexibility in this issue. No autonomy is given to the Prophet ﷺ here. You will just say what you receive. Indoctrination. Of course, all of this had big impact on the spirit of the Prophet ﷺ. He made him really feel servitude. He made him feel so humble. He ma it made him feel the need for the help and support from God. Yani, for example, Lady Aisha sees the Prophet ﷺ eating. He, he sits on the floor when he's eating and he's eating like that. So she said, by Allah, please, lean back. I'll get you a cushion or something and lean back and sit comfortably and eat comfortably. He told her, I am just a servant. I sit like a servant and I eat like a servant. This is the best of creation. The best of human beings. But his feeling is humbleness, humbleness. Yani, subhanallah. The day, the biggest victory in his life was Mecca. He opened Mecca. Guys, do you know what is Mecca? Do you know what does it mean to conquer Mecca? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, uh, the Prophet ﷺ speaks about the situation of planet earth before prophethood, before, before he became a prophet. And he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ قَدْ نَظَرَ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِ الْأَرْضِ فَمَقَتَهُمْ عَرَبَهُمْ وَعَجَبَهُمْ إِلَّا بَقَيَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ Allah looked at the people on earth and he disliked them all except very few groups from the people of the book. And those are called the Arians. Arians are the true followers of Jesus, son of Mary, who rejected the Trinity and rejected the divinity of Jesus. Okay? 
So God, the, the Prophet says, only those were good people and the rest of the planet was a very disgusting planet, full of shirk, full of kufr, full of unbelief, full of worshipping idols, full of worshipping people. Those are Buddhists who worship Buddha, those are Christians worshipping Christ, those are those, only few groups that were worshipping God alone. Those are called the Arians, the followers of Arius. He was the priest of the church, a church in Alexandria called Bukla Church. But this belief was actually concentrated in some capitals. There were capitals of this belief on earth. The capital of Kufr, of this belief, in Arabia was Mecca. 365 idols worshipped in the Kaaba besides Allah. The capital of this belief in Africa was Alexandria and Carthage in, Tun in Tunisia today. The capital of this belief in Asia, too. It was uh, Antioch, which is Antakya, today in uh, southern Turkey, and uh, what is today Istanbul, at that time it was called Constantinople. And the capital of this belief in Europe was Rome. So, Conquering Mecca is actually conquering one of the main capitals of Kufr, of this belief. That's a, a huge victory. The Prophet entered Mecca. How did he enter Mecca? Any other leader will enter Mecca like that on his camel, right? Proud. But the Prophet entered like a defeated person with his head very close to the, uh, about to touch the neck of his camel, like that. He entered very humbly, remembering that victory came from Allah, not from him. Because of this discipline, because of this, one of the ways Allah disciplined him is by reminding him of his past status before prophethood. In Egypt we say, in kuntun situ ligara hatu dafatr tan ara. Let me remind you of the past. Allah is reminding him of the past. وَكَذَلِكَ أَوْحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِّنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْرِي مَا الْكِتَابُ وَلَا الْإِيمَانِ وَلَكِنْ جَعَلْنَاهُ نُورًا نَهْدِي بِهِ مَنْ نَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا وَإِنَّكَ لَتَهْدِي إِلَى صَرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ It says, this is verse number 52 in Surah Ashura. It says, so we have revealed a spirit to you by our command. You knew neither the scripture nor faith before that. Reminding him that before my guidance, you knew nothing. You didn't know anything before my guidance to you. But we made it a light, guiding with it whoever we will of our servants. You give guidance to the straight path, the path of God to whom belongs all that is in the heavens and the earth. Truly everything will return to God. Also, Allah tells him in Surah Yusuf, verse number three: "نحن نقص عليك أحسن القصص بما أوحينا إليك هذا القرآن وإن كنت من قبله لمن الغافلين." We tell you, Prophet, the best of stories in revealing this Quran to you. Before this, you were one of those who knew nothing about it. Surah al duha five, six, and seven. وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْطِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى أَلَمْ يَجِدْكَ يَتِيمًا فَآوَى وَوَجَدَكَ ضَالًا فَهَدَى وَوَجَدَكَ عَائِلًا فَأَغْنَى Did he not find you an orphan and shelter you? Did he not find you lost and guide you? Did he not find you in need and make you self-sufficient? Discipline. Of course, what is accepted from God is not accepted from us. You don't discipline your children like that. You don't, you don't do this to others. But what is accepted from God is not something that can be accepted from us. This is something very important for you to understand. That's why our more role model is Prophet Muhammad, not Allah. The role model is Prophet Muhammad, not Allah. Allah can do things that we don't do. For example, we are not allowed to swear by anything except by Allah. Allah swears by his own creation. 
For example, wal qalam. Allah is swearing by the pen to give us the sense of importance of knowledge. But you cannot swear by your pen. You cannot swear by your children or by your parents. You cannot. Only by Allah. Okay? Strict dictating. Allah tells him, وَاتَّبِعْ مَا يُوحَى إِلَيْكَ وَاصْبِرْ حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ وَهُوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ Surah Yunus 109. Follow what is being revealed to you and be steadfast until God gives his judgment for he is the best of judges. And of course, this had big impact on the Prophet ﷺ. In his manners, as I told you, how he used to eat. You know what? He was eating one day On the, yeah, he sits on the floor like that and he's eating with the companions and then came a Jewish woman and she made fun of him she said look at him sitting like a slave eating like a slave they wanted to punish her she said leave her, leave her she didn't say anything wrong I'm just a servant and I sit like a servant and I eat like a servant when someone comes from a uh, Levant, from Asham or from anywhere else, looking for Muhammad to give him a message or a letter from Heracles or from one of the uh, kings. He enters Medina and he looks for the palace. There is no palace. Okay, looks for a, 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 a house that looks different or bigger. Nothing. And then they tell him he's sitting there. So he goes and he finds people seated, uh, sitting And, and he tries to look for someone uh, sitting on a chair or something. He just, he, among his people, among his companions, no one can know him. Except when someone asks, he's told, this is Prophet Muhammad. You cannot differentiate between him and the others. So, this discipline was reflected on his dua as well. And you know what? His dua is your homework. To find... The dua of the Prophet. He has so many ways of dua, prayers to Allah and invocations, that this discipline is reflected. How he speaks about himself, very humbly. This is your uh, homework. I want you to uh, write them and bring them to me next time. I want to see you uh, doing this homework, trying to find how the spiritual disciplining of Allah to Prophet Muhammad affected his ways of dua. And by the way, he used to write anything that people write. At that time, poor people ride donkeys, mules. The elite would ride horses and camels. He rode horses and camels and donkeys and mules. And he used to walk. In one of the battles, Tabuk, I think, Tabuk, there was no rides enough for people. So every three companions were sharing one ride. So one is riding the camel and two are walking next to it. And then when it's the turn of the other one, the other one goes. And so he had two also companions sharing with him his camel. And they said, Prophet of Allah, we are donating our, our time for you. You are the prophet. You would be always on the camel. He said, what? I am in need of the reward of Allah as you exactly. And you, who told you that you can walk more than I? I can walk also like you. Very humble. Very humble. He used to do the home chores, helping the servant in the kitchen. Not the wife. His wife. Don't cook, don't clean, don't do anything. He is the one who used to do these things for them. He is the one, and this is what Lady Aisha said, He was always serving us. When someone's, uh, you know, uh, clothes uh, needs, uh, maybe a button needs to be mended or something, one of us throws the shirt to his wife, And the button said, fix this shirt. But the Prophet used to mend his own clothes. And used to clean his own shoes. Not clean, because it means to mend his shoes too. He's doing his things for himself. And he was married and he had wives. But he's doing all these things to himself. And he doesn't accept 
anyone to do these things for him. Never. He could have taken some assistance. No. He's assisting himself. He used to accept invitations from people. If someone, a poor person invites him to come and eat and he tells him, come, come today, eat with us. We have some wheat bread. Which means that <laughs> it's not really a big banquet. It's just very dry, old bread, which is tasteless. There is nothing else. He's a poor person. The Prophet would accept the invitation and go with this poor person to make him happy, to please him, and eat with him at home. Adi ibn Hatim al-Ta'i, one of his companions, narrated that he was with the Prophet and then a woman came and stopped him and stood, he stood listening to her. And the woman kept talking, telling him about her problem. And the Prophet kept listening to her. Adi said, until I felt tired of standing on my feet. And the Prophet kept listening to her until she was done from what she is saying. Humble. Uh, he went to the market. He bought things and... One of the companions wanted to carry it for him. He said, why? Why? I'm the owner. I will carry it. And he said, يعني that صاحب الشيء أحق أن يحمله إلا أن يكون ضعيفا فيعينه أخو المسلم. The owner of anything is the one who should carry it unless he is weak then another fellow Muslim should help him. This means what? That if you see someone carrying things do you carry it with him or not? Of course. Don't misunderstand. Of course. You go and you offer to carry with your brother and your brother should tell you, no, thank you. The Prophet said, the owner of the things should carry it. So you always try to carry with people and people should always say, say no, thank you. This is what the Quran does, by the way. Deals with both parties. And he commanded us to be humble also. He said in uh, uh, Sahih Muslim, a hadith. Qama Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawman khatiban. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam stood up giving a khutbah and he said, wa inna Allah awha ilayya. Allah revealed to me an tawada'u humble towards one another hatta la yafkhara ahadun ala ahad so that no one wrongs another or arrogantly boasts to another. Wa la yabghi ahadun ala ahad. Don't be proud of yourself and keep telling people that your grandfather was a prime minister and he did this and he did that. And he did, hey, come on. Number one, this can make others feel bad about you. Feel bad. Because maybe they don't come from a strong family like yours. And also, it's all about you. What did you do? Not your, your grandfathers and so on. And even when you do something wrong, good, Always remember that it all comes from Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ also said, مَا نَقُصَتْ صَدَقَةٌ مِنْ مَالٍ مَا نَقَصَتْ صَدَقَةٌ مِنْ مَالٍ وَمَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّةٍ وَمَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ Allah, The Prophet ﷺ said, Wealth is not diminished by giving charity. So when you have 1,000 and you give 200 in charity, don't say that the money decreased, that there is only 800 left. No, actually, there is 200 left. And the 800 can be lost. But the 200, you guaranteed them. You, are, you actually deposited them in your account with Allah. And he says, Allah augments the honor of one who forgives and one who displays humbleness towards another, seeking the pleasure of Allah, Allah will exalt him in ranks. So Allah will exalt you in ranks when you humble yourself. So, homework. Our homework this time is to read Surah Al-Isra and Surah Yunus. Al-Isra, the night journey, and Yunus, Jonah. Focusing on the disciplining ayat that are disciplining the Prophet Try to 
figure them out. Also, and next time when you come here, bring these ayat with you. Okay? You can put a mark in your in your mushaf and bring it, or you can write them out. Okay? And I will listen to you. Search for the dua of the Prophet. ﷺ. He has a lot of dua where this feeling of servitude is reflected. I want to see you bringing all these types of dua where he feels servitude and humbleness uh, of people. Jazakum Allah khairan barakallah fikum like that we finish today's session and your questions are welcome. Actually that was not by the way wise to the brother left but that was not wise to to for uh, a non-muslim to come and listen to this by the way today. Not wise. So not everything that okay anyway. So Okay number 1 the homework you have to read surah al-Isra and surah Yunus. Isra, night journey, and Jonah. And figure out the disciplining verses for Prophet Muhammad that are disciplining the Prophet Muhammad spiritually. Second, you have to collect the dua, all the dua that you find which reflects his humbleness and his feeling of servitude. Okay, and by the way, this يعني, brother, mashallah, brother uh, Mahmoud uh, works hard. And usually next day in the morning, sometimes يعني, at, by Fajr, this video is on YouTube. You will find it. Go to Bridges Foundation channel. This playlist is called the Spiritual Purification Playlist. You will find it, inshallah. So if you miss anything, go and watch it again. Mm -hmm. Any prophet who lost his way? No. Allah, when Allah chooses, he chose well. Allah chose well. No, there is no, no, no. For us, this, this is, by the way, one of the main <coughs> differences between us and our uh, uh, Christian and Jewish brothers. You know what? Uh, when um, the problems happened in Denmark, Bridges Foundation went and we made Yani, uh, events for journalists and you know remember the when they attacked Prophet Muhammad the cartoonist one of the Danish people came to me and told me by the way I am a supporter yani, I, I support you guys but I still don't understand why are you very upset like that he is just a prophet for them prophets are like uh, celebrities cool but corrupt I mean it wallahi they did every terrible thing every terrible thing adultery, fornication cheating what betrayal what's that Atta and then when I debated with one of the Christian scholars he said this is because we are muahideen not like you mushrikeen we understand Tawheed, but you are polytheists. We Muslims are polytheists. Why? He said, because for us, only God is infallible. People do mistakes. It's a point. It's a point. But, no, excuse me. Attacking the prophets like that is attacking God himself. Because it's as if you are saying God was unable to find more respectable people to choose them. Excuse me, maybe most of us are better than the prophets of the Bible. Excuse me, what is that? Prophet Dawood would cheat one of his own people and with, with his wife. What is that? So are you telling me that God was unable to find more respectable people to make them prophets? As Muslims, we believe that prophets are subject to human error, definitely. But not error in the Sharia. They don't tell you that something is halal while it's haram by mistake. No. They don't tell you that something is haram while it's halal. No. So they don't make errors in delivering the message. And at the same time, they do not commit major sins. That's it. This is the difference between us and them. But for them, no. They trust 
they trust that they did not lie and they de delivered the word of Allah uh, purely while they believe that they are cheaters. How come? How come? You understand me? So, no, for Muslims, when Allah chose, He chose well and the prophets uh, were chosen well. Uh, I may ask the wrong question. Uh, no, sure. You can guide me. Uh, you, while giving lecture, uh, said Prophet Muhammad died. Uh, do you think we use this verse correctly or better you toss, toss out from this verse? Because when we say die, we mean that he's not alive. But at the same time, uh, you discussed uh, on the journey of night, he went into the heavens yeah. and led the prayers. Yeah. People who die can't pray. So we understand from that verse, uh, actually, mm. he's, uh, all of us pass out from this world, but somewhere where we don't have knowledge, Very good. Uh, we are alive uh, okay. you know, after passing away from this world. So, do we, should, you know, whenever we are actually passing a message, do we, should we say that the person has died or passed out? Okay, passed away. Passed away. Is the, right passed away. Uh, the brother is asking a very important question. When I said the Prophet Muhammad died, should we use this term for Prophet Muhammad that he died or just passed away? And also for us, because... I'm sorry, it's a plea. You know, we have to understand... Okay, good. No, for uh, for people here in this life, anyone who 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 whom his life comes to the, to an end, he died, and Allah told him in the Quran, wa You will be dead, and all of them will be dead. That's it. So Prophet Muhammad is a human being like us. He died, but of course, all of all people are now in somewhere else. Okay. Do we call that place as Barzakh? Al-Barzakh. Yes, it's called Al-Barzakh, which is the time between this life and the hereafter. But the problem here, which makes us uh, not able to understand, is that we want to deal with another world, with the dimensions of this world, X, Y, Z, and time. That This way you will not understand the hereafter. Because there's another, it has other dimensions, other dimensions that we cannot understand. Okay? So... Uh, it's okay to say he died. What about the life of Barzakh? I have a whole lesson about Al Barzakh, and we can one day speak. Now it's not ready in my mind, but again, it is the the interval between uh, our death and the hereafter. But some people would say that many, some people died uh, thousands and thousands and maybe millions of years ago. And it would be too long for them. Again, don't deal with another world with the dimension of this world. Because those good people, good people, will feel like the interval was like between two adhan, two salah. No matter, millions of years or not. And those who are tormented will feel like it's very long. Very long. Even if they just die before the hereafter. But when they see the hellfire, Allah tells us in the Quran, they will say, it was just an hour, which means they want to go back. We didn't stay much. We want to go back to the graves. But when they see the hellfire. So I, I have a whole lesson about that. One day I can do it. In general. Now it's, it's not ready in my mind. What I'm trying to understand, if it's possible to understand, mm -hmm. that could we use the word die at one end we say, yes, we can, but at the other end, you again, you know, interpret it, no, we can't. So what should we use while we are actually lecturing? The Quran said, died. Actually, if this is something linguistic in the English language, I'm the last one to ask about it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Because if, if it's something linguistic in the English, it's not need to be asked. But <coughs> the word mayit or mata, which means dead in the Quran, is used for the Prophet and for all everybody. It's okay to say so. Can I?
we, yeah, we, we need to take someone else, okay? Because there are people behind you are yeah. raising their hands. We, we, we can, I'll come back to you again, but let me give a chance to others. Yes. فضوا من حولك. يا يا يا. Okay, the, the brother he misunderstood me. The brother said, but you said that the love of there was a lot of love of his companions, which can lead to his spiritual weakness. But actually, his companions loved him because of his perfect spirit. And Allah said in the Quran, "ولو كنت فضا غليظ القلب لم فضوا من حولك." If you were aggressive and you had a harsh tone and harsh heart. people could have been repelled from around you. But no, here, here I mean, because of the love of his companions, to him, did you attend with us? The, the Ah, that's why. We spoke before about the causes of spiritual weakness. Do you know what is a spiritual weakness? It's arrogance. Becoming proud of yourself and arrogant. This can happen to you for because of some causes. One of the causes is when people look at you highly everywhere. When, when everybody around you love you so you feel like i'm nice i'm cool everybody loves me everybody respects me people look at you like that if if you're famous this is also dangerous for your spirit that's what we're speaking about so i mean that because of the love of everybody to him like that this can affect him spiritually like thinking like it's something in him not allah gave to him not by the grace of allah people love him the main, the main part, the main goal of this workshop is to make people humble and believe that they are nothing without Allah and with Allah with the help of Allah they can do a lot of things so it's not becoming frustrated no you become you become self-confident that you can do a lot with the help of Allah here this is a very subtle difference between arrogance and self-confidence Same thing. No, no, actually, some of these verses are special for the Prophet ﷺ, and some through him we are learning. You will understand from the context and from what he is saying. But of course, nearly all of what Allah is telling him applies for us too. Do not take others as gods besides Allah. But when you go through this verse, don't say, this is يعني, for someone at the time of worshipping idols. Idols exist. Inside us they exist. The, you know what, the, the book that I uh, took most of this or all of this lecture from it, or most of it, is called Hatim Sanamak, Destroy Your Idol. But it's an Arabic book, and I'm not sure that it's translated. If you read Arabic, read this book. The author is Dr. Majdi Al-Hilali, and the book is downloadable on the internet. His website is called Al-Iman Awalan. You go to the library. And you can download from there Hatim Sanamak. Okay, good. So people are supporting your questions, huh? Hmm? <coughs> In the Tashahud. Okay. Allah allows us to speak to him as if he is alive and we are sending him our blessings, our salams. Allah allows us to do that in the, in the, in the salah. Beside that, there is also another explanation for this, that that was the dialogue that happened in the Mi'raj. Yes, okay. Passed away yeah. because the word pass out I mean, so yeah, pass, I mean, yeah, pass, means sorry. got drunk. Sorry. Okay. Pass. <laughs> no, but that was the, the first mistake I did when I went to uh, the States, by the way. I, I was I'm doing the announcements in the microphone and they said the brother passed away and you have to announce the brother so so. I said, brother so and so passed out. And people were ah, I kept laughing. 
And that was a problem in the Janazah actually. Okay. Yeah, I was Egyptian Fallah at that time. Okay. Okay. No, Allah brought them back to life so that he can lead them to prayer. Let me tell you something. Allah does things. And that's, that's why one of my episodes uh, in, in Islamophobia series is called The Difference Between Al-Mu'jiza wal khurafa The Miracle and the Myth. If someone tells me that Prophet Muhammad did this and that, that's a myth. He cannot do it without Allah. That's it. So Allah brought them back to him so that he can lead them in prayer. And by the way, in the ascendance, he also met them all. He met them. I have also read hadiths where actually Prophet Muhammad Last question, okay. Mm. Uh, to Ibrahim, who says, who is that? And I, I would like to... He was, introducing, he was introducing for him the prophets. Yeah, yes. and for example, he saw punishments. Yes, punished. yes. No, 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 no. Okay, the brother is also saying it's a very important question. Does it mean because the Prophet said that in the Isra and Mi'raj, and also Allah, the Prophet also said so, he means in some of his visions, Allah showed him some people being punished. For example, someone taking a rock, hitting his, his head, his head gets يعني, uh, broken, and then it comes back and he break, keeps breaking his and he said, Who's that, Jibreel? He says, This is the one whom his the head used to uh, fall asleep and not go to the salah. Those who pray, A'uzu Billah, Fajr after sunrise. I am sure that none of us does that. We wake up for Fajr, right? Right or not, brothers? Okay? Anyway, so the Prophet spoke about some punishments that he had seen. The brother said, does that mean that the hereafter started already for those who died? Not hereafter. I... Uh, the punishment. There are punishments going on now. No. This is information for the Prophet ﷺ. Allah somehow informed him of this. He saw things that are happening. Again, if you try to deal with the hereafter, with the dimensions of this dunya, you will not understand it. I'll give you an example. Number one, when Allah created Adam, Allah ordered all the malaika to prostrate for him. And of course, those who are less than the malaika, like the jinn. Everybody did, except Iblis. He didn't do that. And Allah blamed him. Why didn't you prostrate yourself to the one that I commanded you? He said, I am better than him. I, you created me from fire, and you created him from clay. Allah said, get out from paradise. You cannot act as a racist here. He went out from paradise. Good? Good. And then what happened? He whispered to Adam in Jannah. Isn't he out of Jannah? How did he whisper to Adam from outside? That was a very frequently asked question 30, 40 years ago. Now no one answers this, asks this question. Now we have mobiles. So now you don't have a problem with someone communicating with someone else from a distance. So people don't even ask this question. 40 years ago, people were asking, how come he was kicked out? How come he spoke to him? You understand? So the issue is, don't deal. Actually, I'm not saying that he called him on a mobile. But I'm saying that, yeah, I'm not saying so. But I'm saying that don't deal with the hereafter with the dimensions of this dunya. You will not be able to understand. A different world. No, there's only one, the brother in green. Because this is the national sh shirt of Algeria in the World Cup, the green. I'm not Algerian, I'm Egyptian, but I support Algeria. Hopefully they don't beat me up. Huh? Yeah. I said what? Muhammad, the best human being, yes. Human being. Yeah. Oh, very good. All human beings make mistakes. 
Did he make mistakes? He made, of course, human error. Human error. But that's why I said all prophets make mistakes. Life, daily, daily life mistakes. Prophet Muhammad went to Medina and he saw them yani, uh, um, doing a certain practice for the uh, palm trees that, uh, you know, throwing pollen grains in a certain way. He said, why do you do so? If you don't do that, still it will yani, uh, bring dates next year. So they thought that the Prophet ﷺ is giving them a command. Prophet Muhammad came from Mecca. He doesn't know about agriculture. So that was a mistake, by the way. But it's an error that has nothing to do with the religion. And it's not something moral. No moral mistakes. Okay? Beside, beside. Prophet Muhammad used to ask forgiveness from Allah about 100 times in, in one, in one يعني, uh, majlis. When he's sitting like that, he keeps seeking forgiveness from what? Not from sins, I'll tell you. From being unable to thank Allah for his blessings. How can you thank Allah for his blessings? For how many years do you need to thank Allah for just the blessing of sight? Huh? Allah purified his heart with Iman. Yeah, that's why he doesn't sin. He doesn't sin in terms of no moral sins, no moral mistakes. At the same time, human error is all the uh, prophets are subjected to it. Jazakumullah khairan. Barakallah feekum. Inshallah, next time is the fifth and the one before the last. Barakallah feekum.